July 15, 1944. One month and nine days after the Allies landed in Normandy, the situation for the Germans has only gotten worse. Throughout this month of June and early July, the Allies have been launching one offensive after another, mainly in the Consector and St. Lo, which the Germans have been able to contain. However, the concentration of troops that the Allies are making in Normandy is increasing, and the balance is tipping day after day in their favor. Thus, and although Rommel has been able to contain the Allied advance, after blocking all his attempts to break through, the German Marshal knows that it is only a matter of time before the entire front collapses, and then it will be the end for them. It was specifically on July 15, 1944, two days before suffering the air raid while traveling in his car, when Erwin Rommel sent a report on the situation on the Normandy front, addressed to the German leader, who paradoxically was also about to suffer his most important attack. This report that the German marshal sent is known as Rommel's ultimatum, because, as we are going to see, the former Desert Fox alludes to the fact that victory in war is not possible, and that a peace should be signed. In addition, this report does not reflect only the opinion of Rommel, since it is also supported by Marshal Kluge, who since July 7 had replaced Rundstedt as Commander-in-Chief of the West. Let us remember that Rundstedt had precisely been replaced, among other things, by defeatist comments, and this report was going to be a new blow to the German leader, seeing that these two marshals had also lost faith in victory. In any case, we are going to see the report and then continue to analyze it. The Commander-in-Chief of Army Group B. Headquarters, July 15, 1944. Considerations on the situation. The situation on the Normandy front is becoming more difficult daily and is approaching a serious crisis. Due to the severity of the combat, the enormous use of enemy material, especially artillery and tanks, and the effect of the enemy's unrestricted air dominance over the battle area, our own casualties are so high that the combat strength of divisions is dwindling rapidly. Replacements arrive in short supply, and with the difficult transportation situation, it takes weeks for them to reach the front lines. We have already suffered casualties of about 100,000 men, including 2,360 officers, or what is the same, an average of 2,500 to 3,000 men per day. On the other hand, the replacements that we have received amount to 10,000 troops to date, of which 6,000 have actually arrived. The material losses incurred by the deployed troops are also unusually large and out of 225 panzers lost, only 17 have been replaced. The recently arrived infantry divisions are rookies, not used to battle, and after a few hours of artillery barrage and heavy bombardment, they are knocked out without being able to do much more. As combat has shown, with this use of material by the enemy, even the bravest troops will be destroyed one by one, losing men weapons, and territory. Through the destruction of the rail system and the threat of enemy air force on tracks and roads up to 150 kilometers behind the front, supply conditions are so difficult that only the most basic essentials can be brought in, and it is necessary to exert the greatest economy in everything, especially in artillery ammunition and mortars. It does not seem likely that these conditions will improve, as enemy action is continually reducing available transport capabilities, and enemy activity in the air will likely become more effective as the many airfields in the bridgehead area are brought to use. No new unit can be brought to the Normandy front without weakening the 15th Army front, or the Mediterranean front in southern France which are also in danger of attack. But only the front of the 7th Army in Normandy urgently needs two fresh divisions, since the troops there are exhausted. On the enemy side, fresh divisions, and huge amounts of war material flow to the front every day. In addition, and because the enemy supplies are not disturbed by our air force or our navy, this rate of supply only increases, making the pressure they put on us stronger and stronger. Under these circumstances, we must hope that the enemy in the foreseeable future will manage to break through our weak front, especially that of the 7th Army, and penetrate deep into France. Apart from the sector reserves of Panzer Group West, which are for the moment tied up by combat on their own front, and due to enemy air dominance which means they can only move at night, no mobile reserves are available in the 7th Army for the defense against that rupture. 
the action of our Air Force will have as during these past weeks very little effect. Troops are fighting heroically everywhere, but the unequal fight is coming to an end. In my opinion, it is necessary to draw conclusions from this situation. As Army Group Commander-in-Chief, I feel compelled to speak clearly on this point. Signed Erwin Rommel. And well, as Rommel announced, it was exactly three days later when the British began the huge Goodwood operation with which they managed to advance towards the southeast of Cannes, although they could finally be contained at a very high cost. However, a few days later, specifically on July 25th, the Cobra operation began in the US sector, which this time did break through the German front widely, and ended up breaking the German defense of Normandy. Thus, we see that Rommel was not mistaken when he launched this desperate report, in which he announced that the German divisions were at a minimum, and that it would be difficult for them to withstand the new Allied offensives. In any case, what Hitler expected at that moment was not that his generals would tell him the harsh reality, and that they would immediately tell him that there was nothing to do anymore. Although they could be harsh in reporting him, he hoped that despite everything they would promise him that they could continue to resist and that they would manage to control the situation. Added to the great defeats that were taking place on the Eastern Front due to Operation Bagration, this report made Hitler feel very bad, and it was clear that it would mean the dismissal of Rommel. However, the accident that the Marshal suffered two days later put him out of action and it was not necessary to formalize any dismissal as had previously happened with Rundstedt. Finally, it should be noted that since Rommel was defeated at Alamein almost two years earlier, the marshal adopted a rather pessimistic position on the situation, and the German leader himself came to accuse him of being defeatist time and time again. There is no doubt that when he tells him that he has to draw the conclusions from the situation that he has just described, Rommel is indicating that the only way out they have is negotiation as he had already said a month earlier in the meeting they had had near Paris, after the Allied landing. This meeting had taken place on June 17th, when the situation was not so bad because the invasion had been contained in an orderly manner, the port of Cherbourg was still preserved, and the Soviets had not yet launched their great offensive. When Rommel told Hitler that they could not win this battle ahead and that the best thing to do was to negotiate at least with the British and Americans, the German leader fanatically told him to hold on, and to wait for the miraculous new weapons that were going to change everything. However, now a month later, it was clear that nothing was going to change the imminent Allied break that was about to take place, and after it the advance that the Allies could make to practically the German border, without anything being able to stop them. Well, I hope that with this report you have been able to get an idea of what the situation was like during the final phase of the Battle of Normandy. As you know, I am currently living here, so if you want to come this spring-summer, either on your own or in the different organized trips that we have set up, you can send me a message to the email that I have left in the description. In addition, I have also left you the program that we did with Antonio Munoz on the rupture of the front in Normandy, which without a doubt, amply completes this video. Thank you all for being part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.